alhamdulillah. This exemplifies the second point that we're going to move up, uh, move to. We've already covered the erroneous beliefs on, on how women were raised. The second reason we want, uh, the second uh, reason that we want to cover is women experiencing incomplete and unsatisfactory intimacy with their husbands. So, Hale, I'm going to direct this question to you. What have you heard from women in your professional life about this particular point, and especially from that comment that we, and that came in? Well, actually, I, you know, my heart goes out to the sister. There are thousands and thousands of sisters with this very same dilemma. It is not uncommon. I hear it all the time. And you know what happens is that a lot of sisters actually repress a lot of their emotions. They want to play the role of a martyr in the relationship, and they want to have that mentality of being patient and enduring, which is all admirable, and it's all good, mashallah. However, all of this suppression will one day, it's, it's like a volcano that will erupt. And you have to be careful about that. That's why it's so important to discuss these is issues, to have it resolved, and not to just, you know, just sweep it under the rug. And what I have seen with, um, regarding your question, that generally women are capable of experiencing climax. Uh, so they come in and they tell me that they're in their relationship, their husband is not able to fulfill them. And my first question is, are you capable of experiencing it? And they do claim that they do. But what happens is that uh, either it is the lack of knowledge, because a lot of men, you know, as you were saying, Henna, they are brought up in, you know, maybe very uh, either sheltered environment where they're you know, lowering their gaze, they have no interaction with women, so they have no uh, experience dating or doing any of these things that we we don't approve of within within the Islamic text. Uh, or they're learning about intimacy and physical intimacy through porn and through means that are not helpful for the marriage. So they are, say they lack the, the useful knowledge and, and the skills. They may not know all of the details about foreplay, how to get their wife stimulated. And another aspect of this is that they may not spend enough time during foreplay, and there's also these misconceptions that we've all been talking about. Saba, you mentioned it about how a lot of men have this feeling that maybe their wives are just not capable. And if you think about it, if a man really believes that his wife is not capable, how hard is he going to try? He is going to convince himself that this is not going to happen and not put time or effort into it. And sometimes it's a lack of patience, the lack of patience of men, which makes it a bit difficult. So if you don't put enough time, if you don't put enough effort into the preparation and into, into the foreplay, it will become uh, painful for her to experience the climax. So mm -hmm. I had actually one client who was so frustrated from this lack of climax that she would actually get into fights with her husband because what happens is that the anxiety builds, the frustration builds, and like I said, these are all repressed emotions that will become explosive in one way or another. And here we aren't blaming men because and for, because I don't want anybody to think that it's like oh you know uh, it's all the husband's fault and he didn't because obviously look at uh, you know uh, uh, like you said Holly if they're coming from a culture where these things are not talked about and especially here in the West and anywhere in the world now with media all over the place they're exposed to hypersexuality everywhere bombarded from all sides um, and then they turning towards internet porn and it's just giving everybody a really horrible sense of what uh, the spiritual and beautiful act should be like and this is how they're first exposed to it it just it just breaks my heart to think about that but um but the great thing from this that we're learning especially from holly what you what you've been constantly telling us that they can learn they can change they can the men can change and the women can change so what are some of the skills, so let's talk about that, like some of the skills that, that can be learned. So when, when women complain about physical intimacy being painful to the lack of foreplay, it's not hard in, this time to, in these times to learn about how, how, what is foreplay, what makes, and talk to your wife, what makes you, her feel better. Um, we have to learn, we have to think, notes, facts like this, that 
more than half women, possibly researched by Alfred Kinsey and um, Cher Hyatt, says uh, that some more than half of all women do not regularly reach climax by by penetration alone. And um, this is, subhanAllah, you know, like you, you hear this stuff and you're like, okay, how do you apply this to our life? And even those husbands who may have known and when they don't want to take the trouble to find, uh, to provide the additional stimulation necessary uh, for their wives, this is exactly what Hale is talking about when she says that they get in, you know, it, it the frustration builds up. Um, let me, uh, f during our own research about this, subhanAllah, about foreplay, you know, what more could we want from our text when, um, our Islamic text, when we go back to the point where there's religious, not only mm, one will not put into the effort unless they realize the necessity and the religious importance of doing so. So if you look at uh, Islamic text, Imam Ibn Qubama, the Hanbali jurist, narrates a hadith that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not begin intercourse until she has experienced desire like the desire you experience, lest you fulfill your desires before she does. This is how how, how our pious predecessors and the people who came after them, they were taught. And where yet we are taught by magazines and media, subhanAllah. Saba, I want you to elaborate more on the importance of fourth play from an Islamic point of view. Um, definitely, you know, and subhanAllah, Islam as the perfect religion has um, not only recognized the crucial need of women reaching her climax, but has even laid out specific instructions for men. The ayah I, uh, from Surah Al-Baqarah that I quoted earlier, Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةُ الصِّيَامِ رَفَثُ إِلَى نِسَائِكُمْ uh, in, in this verse, basically, it's a, it's a long verse, so in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, is referring to the same act in two different words. So, uh, in the beginning, it's called rafathu, and then later on, uh, it said, فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُهُنَّ And the, the second word is bashara. Now, the most translations of Qur'an uh, 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 tran uh, translate both of the terms as sexual intercourse. And I always wondered, you know, what could be the wisdom of using two different terms in the same verse for the same action. It was not until I asked a shaykh, I realized that the difference in the two terms was simply lost in translation. Rafatha, which comes first in the verse, is it's, it, it literally means um, speech that may be a mean of inducing coitus, speaking to entice one's spouse. So basically, in simpler language, it is the, um, the sexual talk with the wife. SubhanAllah, you know, amazing how Allah Azza wa Himself points out to the fact and the necessity of enticing a woman through speech and foreplay. And we have, you know, we take a Quranic ayah and we look at the tafsir and we look at the tafsir from the sunnah and from the sahaba and from um, the scholars and uh, of the past. Uh, so I Imam al-Zaylami uh, records a narration on the authority of Anas ibn Malik that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, one of you should not fulfill one's sexual need from one's wife like an animal. Rather, there should be between them foreplay of kissing and words. Similarly, Ibn al-Qayyim reports in his famous At-Tib al-Nabwi that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade from engaging in sexual intercourse before foreplaying. And, um, uh, you know, these are all uh, narrated sources uh, uh, from, from our text. Now, going back to the verse, the second word mentioned in the ayah is bashara, which is the actual intercourse itself. So, if we take the words uh, in order and into consideration, the word it is obvious that bashara should take place after enticing the wife and fondling her to the point that she's ready um, for her husband. Uh, it's interesting because even for that, our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warn men not to indulge in any practice that may hinder a wife from reaching her climax. And um, as we look at the text in the different ahadiths, one of, one of the reasons why azal or the coitus interruptus, um, also known as uh, the early withdrawal, is disliked in Islam is because it may leave a wife unsatisfied. 
And uh, so when the men came to ask the, the Prophet wasallam, he specifically told them to take their wife's permission. Um, now, there are always exceptional times when um, a husband may put in the effort and he may take his time, but a woman uh, may take longer to reach her climax, uh, you know, to the point where uh, basically that there may be a need um, of a husband to use other methods to to uh, satisfy his wife, but the point is that you know uh, he should take this under consideration if she has not reached her climax. Um, and Allah Hale. knows best. <laughs> Subhanallah. Okay, Hale. How? Um, let's shift. Uh, make a um, shift, and I'm going to be talking to you about how does not being satisfied with climax cause avoidance towards intimacy amongst women because remember we go back to at the beginning of our seminar when we were talking about so many avoidance uh, women are just averse and they avoid being in that setting so can you tell me how not being satisfied with climax causes avoidance sure you know what happens is that when a woman when women repeatedly get aroused but they don't climax they get very frustrated which makes them want to avoid intimacy like you said altogether now here's the the psychology behind it is that men are thinking about physical intimacy much more frequently throughout the day and they're able to turn the switch on and off throughout the day without experiencing the climax now as women, women have a much harder time uh, turning it off once they're stimulated because it's not on the mind uh, of women on a constant basis. And so once they are aroused and they are, they are stimulated, then there's a greater need for them to experience the climax. Are there other avoidance behaviors? Yes, there's a long list actually. Um, I hear all sorts of stories from the husbands in therapy where um, a lot of times their wives set up some really unrealistic rules for the husband uh, in order to get physically intimate. I had one client who uh, expected his uh, who is who expected her husband basically for an entire week to to do all the things that that she wanted to take care of the kids to not have an argument not to ask anything of her to set up flowers to make the room perfect I mean the poor guy had to have everything perfect and you know what I um, what I confronted her with is that you know what it sounds like to me is that you're setting things up so you know you expect perfection um, and it's just it's not gonna happen I mean throughout the week there's there's bound to be a discussion there's bound to like you forget an errand you forget to buy the milk you you know you don't have time maybe you get busy with work and you can't help out with the kids you know these are all natural occurrences in our life and we have to be understanding we cannot set these unrealistic expectations and I actually have a case where um, uh, you know, one of the the husband is setting this kind of unrealistic expectation for their wife, wanting their wife to do everything just so perfectly in order to have it. Now that's the exception, but it you know it does happen. Uh, another way that um, that women avoid this is actually they use conjured medical excuses you know that famous and that cliche honey I have a headache and um, and then there's also the um, some actually resort to starting I've had I've had sisters actually admit to me that they don't want to get involved and so like right before it's time to sleep they start up a fight with their husband so um, so they wouldn't have to take part in the physical intimacy unfortunately Hale, I know body image has to play a part in this. From a young age, our young sisters, our young daughters, we've, you know, body image is such, uh, with the magazines, the girls are looking at pictures, comparing themselves to models um, constantly. The guys are also looking at models, not lowering their gaze and thinking that that's how women should look like. Um, and there's this unrealistic amount of, uh, expectation of what a woman's body should be like what you know and especially could you address the men in the audience about what many women feel about their bodies especially because of the constant media onslaught 
and especially after having children. Yes, absolutely. Brothers, my dear brothers, most sisters are extremely insecure about their appearance. I don't care how beautiful you see them, how striking they may look, but when they look in the mirror, unfortunately, a lot of sisters have what's called a body dysmorphia, and this is where they view themselves very differently from how others view them, and they are very insecure. They feel that they have gained weight, especially, like you said, after having kids, you don't look the same same as when you do when you're 20 and so they become very self-conscious and there's this feeling of I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm inadequate and because like Hannah you said we're always comparing ourselves as females to these um, you know these these supermodels who are on the cover of magazines and I want to just make a po you know point here and say that these um, these models, these uh, glossy images have been tainted with, they have been changed and they have been um, airbrushed so much so that you would not even recognize the person. And actually it's funny, um, Cindy Crawford said, I want to look like Cindy Crawford. That's how <laughs> different she looks on the magazines. And I think we have to remind ourselves that. I mean, I know I made a conscious effort to remind myself looking at the magazines that, you know what, this is just absolutely not real because they do have the blemishes, they do have the they have all this. So now this is a side note. Going back to the brothers. Brothers, what you can do, you play a big role in your wife's self-esteem because like I said before, she, um, you are the only man that really gets to appreciate her beauty. So make her feel beautiful. Give her compliments. Give her sincere compliments. Not the kind like snickering or sarcastic, oh yeah, yeah, you're really beautiful. No, I mean sincere compliments. Things look for her best features and make her really open her eyes to it because honestly what happens a lot of times sisters look in the mirror and all they see are the negative traits so if you help build her self-image her self-confidence because once that happens then she's going to be a lot more responsive to you and especially when it comes to the act of physical intimacy that's when you really need to open up I know a lot of brothers may not want to convert during that, but I think that's a very important time to help your wife to you know to lower her guards, to to help her to relax and to make her feel attractive. So you know, give her the compliments that she so badly needs, and um, and once you make her feel beautiful, desirable, and irresistible, then. Um, she will be so much more open, so much more confident and responsive. Thank you, um, uh, Hale. There are actually some great reads on uh, Muslim matters with excellent tips um, that the, uh, you have written, Hale, uh, uh, how to win his heart. And there's um, also an article that I wrote, Is Piety the Only Beauty? It's helpful to go over those articles and you know get an idea of um, uh, how to basically uh, just prepare physically for for the spouse. Yes, actually, um, definitely, those are like some good pointers. Now we always have like the do's and the don'ts, right? So we address mm -hmm. the things that we we need to do, the, the things that brothers that you can do. Now I'm going to give you the long list of things that you shouldn't do. It's actually not that long, but uh, one of the most important things is never ever make fun or criticize your spouse's body when they are so un, you know vulnerable. I think that is the worst thing you can do. And I have had um, I've had clients feel so um, they feel so inadequate because you know the first time their spouse saw them they made some kind of a funny remark um, and and men they don't mean to be malicious I know that a lot of brothers uh, they're accustomed to palling around with their with their friends and and I have one brother who you know in his family what they do to bond is to just kind of uh, poke fun at each other. And he did this to his wife. And he started giving, you know, just funny nicknames, and, and which were not so funny to her. <laughs> and, and this um, actually really affects the sister. So I know that you don't mean it. I know that you're not there to be malicious or hurt her feelings. And you would never have dreamt that this would affect her so gravely. So the best thing to do is, um, is just make her feel make her feel confident not to criticize 
because a lot of times what brothers think is that okay, I'm going to criticize her. I'm going to say, oh, you, should, you know, it would be great if you look like that. If you could only be a size six, and and they don't realize that this really shuts down a woman. She she will not change. She will actually um, she will rebel on a subconscious level. So uh, since a big part of being aroused in, in many women is the mental. She needs to be there mentally. So she needs to feel. She needs to feel alluring. She needs to feel beautiful uh, uh, to be able to perform physically. Now addressing the sisters because this is, you know, it's, um, it's a responsibility from both sides. Sisters, confidence is one of the most appealing aspects of a person. You know, regardless of regardless of your size, your shape, any of that, you have to feel, um, you have to accept yourself. This acceptance is such an important aspect. I mean, I take, I take sisters sometimes that have zero, zero self-esteem and start building and giving them that feeling of, you know, appreciate yourself. And it's about being grateful to Allah as the wajal. And, um, and like, uh, Saba, you mentioned about the my article, how to win a sister's, how to win his heart on Muslim matters. This actually does give a nice um, an outline on what sisters can do to to prepare themselves to look your best because it's really not about being like a supermodel. It's about being your best, and and all of us know what it takes. You know, it takes that. Going out, being physically active, um, watching what we're eating, and feeling, um, and taking care of ourselves. You know, how are we looking at home? How are we presenting ourselves? You know, a lot of times when we're courting, uh, a lot of sisters are just, you know, they can't wait to see to see their spouse. They're just, you know, they're dressing up, they're looking their best, and that's what actually appeals to the man. And we need to continue this throughout our marriage. And it's about um, being very grateful for the blessings you have and realizing that men are visual creatures. They are visual and they need to see you. I have had stories of women going and hiding in the closet to changing. All lights have to be off and it has to be pitch black. And you know, I try to reason with them that your spouse, you are the only halal person for him. This is not fair. You know, so if you deprive your husband of this um, of this halal outlet, guess what? He will resort to the haram. And I've had um, sisters who do this and they get really upset when their husband turns to pornography. And I'm like, what? Are, you're not leaving him a choice. You know, you need to, we need to support our husband. Um, they Paul, are exposed to so much. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Ali, do you think yeah. at that point, um, yes, obviously, and we, and, and just, I just wanted to interject a little bit, uh, two points. One, that men also need uh, affirmation from their husband, wives as well. When men are not told by wives, uh, compliments given by wives, we tend to forget that men have emotions too, and that men need to hear the compliments as well. So if you could go into a little bit about that, just a few lines about that. And absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yes. And the other point that I wanted to mention is that definitely this is, I do not and uh, because Hale and uh, uh, Umreem and I have to have several discussions about this, we don't want anybody to take away from this that we are saying that if a man fa falls into pornography, it's absolutely the woman's fault, or if the man starts cheating, it's the woman's fault. It's you know a man is a, uh, is in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, he's responsible for his own acts. He has to answer to his Allah. It, you know, he will not be able to say, you know, so so we just just wanted to reiterate that because sometimes I know we get a lot of um, comments right, and stuff. Um, sorry, you know, and I'm going to interject over here because I've been so passionate about this topic, the whole porn and sex addiction. And as you know, I'm doing the series on Muslim matters and I have had um, uh, actually a training with, under a, um, a certified sex addict therapist. So basically this this whole porn and sex, uh, there are, you know, there are two two reasons why as Hale is saying that, that you know, it, it is when a husband is lacking the, um, the physical satisfaction in, in the house and he, not that his action is okay to, to, to do but, you know, sometimes it's coming from uh, uh, from the lack of uh, uh, his wife's interest in intimacy, but there is also a far majority 
that um, this porn and sex addiction is just you know a psychological problem in men I have had several several clients as you know sisters and brothers where they have a perfect intimate life you know they 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 say it it's like their wives dress up they do the workout they like they actually have role playing everything is happening in their intimate life yet the husband um, has addiction uh, sexual so, addiction issues so Saba you're talking about extreme like some extreme examples so these no, are not, not some extreme mainstream. examples no no I'm sorry Hina but these are not some extreme examples addiction is a psychological problem in men and uh, it, 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 it cannot be traced back to the wife's lack of performance and I'm so glad that both of you brought this up and uh, we it did need some clarification mm -hmm. because it's like you said we're not here to blame anyone. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes certain behaviors do lead to others. And, yes, and it's this, um, you know, I just wrote this article about masturbation, and we are seeing that people are writing in and confessing about, you know, their addiction to pornography. That it's and and sometimes they think it'll be resolved with marriage, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. that's not the case because you have a lot of sisters writing in and saying, you know what, I'm happily married and I'm providing everything to my spouse, and yet he is he still has this addiction. So mm -hmm. thank you for um, emphasizing that. Back to your question, mm -hmm. Henna, as far as men needing compliments. Well, this is something um, I addressed at the beginning as far as the, you know, the five, the top needs that men have. One of them is affirmation. Affirmation mm -hmm. meaning that men need to be complimented. And a lot of a lot of times we forget that. We're so focused on getting the compliments that we may not be as verbose. I mean, he needs to feel attractive. You need to see what features that he has that you enjoy, that you appreciate. Make him feel attractive. And, and I think that it's all about how you make your spouse feel. The bottom mm -hmm. line is how do you make your wife or your husband. If they feel good, if they feel attractive, and if they feel appreciated, you will get so much out of them. And uh, to continue with uh, mm -hmm. with what we were talking about as far as women and their body image, um, I remember a client that was actually, she was so beautiful. I mean, I was just, you know, stunned, much love by her beauty. And she was a size zero. And yet, she had this body dysmorphia that I was, you know, I was talking about, and she saw herself as fat. And so, the, what what it boils down to is that a lot of women, when they look in the mirror, their self-talk is that they they're saying to themselves, "I'm fat, I'm ugly, I have wrinkles." And I remember when I was. Um, I was doing the Celebrate Mercy, and it was the program was about transformation through tribulation. And one sister who was really like at the lowest point of her life saw this, and she's like, you know, I want to transform. I want to transform through my difficulties. She came in for therapy, and and we worked on this. And Subhanallah, something that I I talked to her about that really clicked with her, and I want to share this with you today. Please go ahead. When she told me that she she feels ugly, she was in an abusive relationship, unfortunately, and her husband really um, belittled her, made her feel so unattractive, and so her self-esteem was basically down to a zero. and And I told her, when you look in the mirror, and you are you are making all these criticism and all this negative uh, self-talk. Who are you criticizing? And every single sister I ask this to, they will reply, I'm criticizing myself. Mm -hmm. And I reframe and I say, no, you're criticizing Allah. Allah created you. He made you the way you are. So when you are complaining about your features, about why you look like this, and why is this, and why is that, uh, about your hair, about your body, you're actually criticizing Allah, astaghfirullah. And this, I cannot tell you, transformed her. And she realized the gravity of her statement. And I, you know, so I encourage all the sisters out there to really think about this. That when you look in the mirror, say positive things to yourself and just, um, and just realize that Allah created you, so embrace who you are and be the best you can be, inshallah. Oh, subhanallah. That is awesome. Thank you, Hale. Um, you know, compliment each other, thank each other, and thank Allah, subhanAllah. That is, so, it, you know, we, we, that was such a positive note. Um, I am going to 
bring Sabah back into this discussion. And Sabah, what would you say is, how would you say that the lack of satisfaction during intimacy um, may affect women based on our discussions? 